We're here at Heirloom Gardens. We're back and it's fall time and fall is the predominant time of the year if you want to plant a tree in your yard. This is the time to do it. Ryan, Hi. Tell, how you doing? Good to see you. Nice Ken. to Thank be you back. For coming out. Thank Absolutely. You. What kind of tree did you pick for us today? Well, today we picked a white oak. It is a native to Texas tree. Um, we'll go over the reasons and all why we did that, but there are many trees to choose from. You just go ahead and you pick what you want and, and you get in the ground. We're going to show you how to do that today. Let's go get it. All right. We're back and as you can see, we've gotten our tree. Brian, you've selected an area here that's pretty much full sun. Why, why this area? Uh, yes, full sun. Well, on most of your trees, Kyle, you gotta remember that you gotta look at the height of the tree, the area that it's gonna change, because underneath that, you're gonna wind up having shade in a few years. Right. So take, take into account all those different uh, features that you're looking for. Uh, this particular tree is an evergreen. Um, again, it is going to grow probably 45 to 55 foot tall. Okay. Uh, so yeah, everything around us will be in the shade in a matter of you know five, ten years, somewhere, something like that. Um, but what other things you got to consider is: Do I want fall color? Do I want? Right. Uh, there's just a lot of different features to consider. Um, right. What we're okay. doing on this particular scenario is, I want you guys to see how to dig the hole. We here in the Brazos County have a lot of clay. I mean, it's bad. And then you uh, add that to the fact that we have so much salt in our water. If your right. hole is not a good drainer, we're in trouble because it's what not, can not you do well. to help that? Well, when we plant a tree for you guys, we actually incorporate uh, gypsum. Um, there's a package of things, and I think you right. guys have that on camera and, somewhere. And that's where we'll end up. So, we'll, we'll see that whole. The main go thing, though, Kyle, the main thing is make sure, and we have this happen all the time. Customers who plant their own trees, they're like, well, you know, look at this weird area right here. And by, if they're going to go, I want the tree to be planted up to here. Well, guess what? If you plant it any higher than the soil that's in this pot, you're mm -hmm. going to kill that tree. Okay. So just to help with settling, when we plant a tree, we plant it about three inches out of the ground and then mound up uh, around it. Elevate it a little bit and that Correct. way it settles down into Correct. its natural hole. Tell us a little bit about the star here. What kind of tree is this? Well, this guy right here again is a white oak. Um, it is an evergreen tree, similar to a live oak in the aspect that it does not lose its leaves in the wintertime. Okay. And what's, what size is this? This is considered a 15 gallon. Okay. okay. Are there any, for this area, are there any different sizes that do better, like a five gallon tree or? Not really. Not it's really? just in patience is the only thing. Most people want to start with a little bit larger tree if they can. Just they want so their shade quick. Right. Exactly. Well, let's, let's set it down to the hole right. here. We're going to get our hands dirty. Concept of what we're doing here, we want to show you guys how big this hole actually is. So we're going right. from that. So by putting it in the deal, oh, where, where'd you go, Kyle? <laughs> We're here. Okay, so <laughs> the bucket actually, so if you do this at home, you want the bucket, what is that, four or five inches? Or you, this is the ground level here, so you want that about a little above what the natural ground is. Correct. We dug the hole out. Now, what's going to happen down here, guys, is when we take this out of the pot, we're actually going to add a few inches of soil back to it. Right. Okay? And then that will put that crown of it about three inches above the soil. Okay. So that's what we'll do. Okay, let's get this guy back out. <laughs> so you're adding gypsum now for what purpose? Gypsum does a couple things for us. One, helps with the clay issue that the Brazos Valley has. Right. Um, you can't really put too much gypsum. Doesn't hurt. It's not going to burn. It's not a fertilizer or anything of that sort. What gypsum is going to do, it's one of the tiniest particles and it breaks up the clay particles, which is the smallest uh, soil particle. Okay. Um, it also helps uh, with the salt issue. If this hole does not drain well, um, the gypsum helps tie up the sodium molecules in the, the water that we have. Okay. So, uh, uh, how, what's a good way to... When do you actually take the tree out of the bucket here? Once you get the hole prepped? Pretty much. Okay. And then, actually, the, the agriform, we typically put a, a little bit on the bottom, but then I personally like to fill the hole about halfway and put the rest of them out there. And, and so what are this, the, these pellets you're dropping in here? Agriform pellet is a rooting hormone, or a rooting okay. uh, fertilizer, like a, per se. A, a stimulant for the root Correct. To, to promote quicker growth type thing? Exactly. Very inexpensive. Very okay. inexpensive. Okay. Couple things to consider when you're pruning the tree. Right. Branches never if they start at this level, they will never grow up. People have that misconception all the time. So this branch will never get eight feet off the ground. You have to keep pruning until you reach that point, and then that's where that branch will develop. Where, where do you prune a limb at <coughs> to, to get the best growth for the tree and the best care for the tree? Couple things I want to show you on this one. Let's if you trim right here. Okay, so that's what, maybe an inch and a half, two inches away from the trunk. This is one way of doing it, but I'm gonna tell you why. If you leave the stubs as this caliper is small, it will make your caliper of your tree get bigger faster. But if you were just trying to get rid of it, you just go pretty close, probably a quarter inch or so from the okay. from the, the from stem the there, okay. and that way you have to allow for the callus and the heel. Okay. 
Is, is, but there's no set the formula as far as how far from the from the dirt level no, you sir. can trim a tree. Not at all. You can just trim it all the way to the top if if, if you thought you needed to. Correct. What we'll about probably the, about this point. Okay. Now I see it sometimes the uh, trees. You know they have these little bitty I guess sucker limbs to the side. Is it always best to, to try to keep those off? You the can. Uh, it's not going to really affect the the growth of the tree, but your branches, if they're already larger, they are the more sturdy or the more. Uh, I guess I'm trying to say develop, they're going to take all the energy. Right. So until that branch is moved, that other smaller branch wouldn't grow. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. What? And, and so we're still a few inches above the, the natural Correct. terrain here, right? Correct. What about, I see it's all smooth over here and the roots look like they've started growing around. Do you, do you agitate that a little bit? Absolutely. Break it up? This is called tickling of the roots when you're in this field. So okay. you kind of get in and just play with them a little bit. Okay. Kind of rip them apart. As long as you just tear up the roots more or less. You Correct. Just, this is just a stimulant to get them out of their... A healthy yeah. tree, guys, should not have so many roots that you see no soil going around it. That means it's been in the pot too long. Okay. Okay. The old adage of a 50 cent plant in a $5 hole does not work in our ecosystem because of the clay. Right. So a okay. has found that when they did a testing of X amount of subjects that as soon as that nice hole filled up with roots, it was just like being planted in a pot. It right. never left that, that gotcha. area. Okay. Sounds good. So it may be slower to get your tree to take off this way, but it's better in the long run. Better in the long run. Is what they proved. And that's what you want because you're planting a tree, hopefully, to be there for 20, 30, 50 years. Exactly. And, okay. Exactly. Well, what's next? Uh, the next step that I'd like to consider is about to put about halfway up into the hole, guys, fill back up, and then we're going to put more agroform pellets around the okay. tree itself. We say here's here, and here's some of these pellets. Did we save these for later, or are these just extra? This is what are going to be put in the hole in just a second. Oh, okay, so more are going to be put in. Correct. We have some on the bottom, then we have some around the edges okay. where the roots are going to be. You said earlier, a tree that's in a pot you can plant any time of the year. Correct, because your but, roots have not been damaged. Right, but obviously this is the best time of the year to do Correct. it. Correct. The reason fall is number one for planting in our market is our ground doesn't get cold enough in the winter time. Right. So the roots continue to grow even through the times when the tops are dormant. Okay. Okay. -do. So what he did was he just put the pellets back in as you can see. You just drop them down their hole and just and spread them out like at the 10, 2, and 4 like the old doctor. They dissolve the slowly so the okay. roots will have a, a way to get to them. The okay. next step is to actually take the extra amendment soil and then fill it back up. Okay, and we'll just fill that up and build a, a, a small mound. Correct. Around the tree, right? Okay. Now I see here we're just using one bag. Is that just, just for the sub because it was the size of the tree and the size of the hole we dug? Well, you want to have a fine soil right? go in because you want to make sure that you have filled up all the air spaces in that clay that we just put back in the and hole. And that's why he's using the edge of the hoe here, the handle of the, of the shovel, to, to tap it down in there. Typically, we use one bag of topsoil when this happens right. per tree. Now, how long will it take this tree to get established in this hole? Probably, I would not remove the staking kit that you'll see us put on until one year later. Oh, okay. Okay. Make sure as you're filling this tree, we normally would be putting water in at this time as well. Right. So you're, again, you're trying to make sure all air pockets are taken care of. Never depend on the biggest misconception of when someone plants a tree, they're like, hey, we have irrigation right. in our lawn. Well, guess what? Irrigation is only designed to give you one inch of water per week. Right. Trees, a new tree will need more than that. Notice how the, the holes are all settling down now. We've right. got lots of sinking going on. And I'm also seeing, I'm, I guess these are just the little feeder roots that are getting exposed. That's okay? That's okay, because that's going to be mulched over here in a minute. Oh, okay. That pretty much will probably settle the hole, guys. Okay. And then the next step we'll do will be to install the mulch on top and then go back with the liquid fungicides. And, and so we killers. put the mulch on first, and then we go back and hit it with the root stimulator and the super thrust. Correct. So he's going to put the mulch on. Looks like it's been here already for years, doesn't it? It, it does. <laughs> uh, so, same scenario, do you, you pick a certain, like a, if that's a 20 pound bag, you use half of it? Pretty uh, much, yes. Depending on, on the yes. size of the tree? Now, very important again, I have people come in and ask this all the time. I've seen this never and I've never had it explained. Never mulch come up here, guys, as this part down here, uh, as the mulch begins to rot, it actually right. kills your cambium layer, the part that carries the nutrients okay. to the tree. So you want to pull the mulch back away from the, the trunk or from the Correct. main stem of the tree? Never have it on it. Okay. 
But other than that, so, you just build up a, a little... A little berm is still okay, berm, like old-fashioned. Okay. But yes, you still have to put a little bit on the trunk, just, I mean, on the top, just to keep the roots from right. being exposed. Right. And this also helps with water retention, correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, mulch typically isn't going to help you because it's not, it's, it's so porous. It's like oh, putting okay. sand up here. Okay. Now, the old adage where you build a dirt mound, that's where you get all the water to hold in there. Oh, okay. Again, dangerous in our ecosystem because of the clay. Because of the clay and it will retain the water. Now, we've already put this together. This is a Super Thrive. We use this all the time. What is Super Thrive? It is actually a, a hormone-based, uh, it's not really even a fertilizer. It just, it's like a vitamin. Okay. Okay. So plant vitamins. This, the root stimulator, is more of a, it actually has a hormone in it. Um, both of which, though, help take it off to get the take okay. off. So again, this guy's mixed, I think, was it four tablespoons? Three and a half, Three and a half tablespoons per gallon. So we just mix a little small batch. This is one capful per five right. gallon bucket. So this stuff goes a long way. Yeah, I remember that. It just takes a little green cap, and I mean, it's like a thimble. It's exactly. Very, very, slimy. very tiny. You'll keep. You'll buy this little jar, and it'll stay in your garden or in your shed for years because <laughs> exactly. it takes so little of it. Exactly. Okay, so he's he's poured the mixture on. What next? We're gonna have to stake it. Always stake your trees at least the first year, guys. If you don't, they're gonna get too much movement, and any movement of that root ball will cause that uh, the new roots to break off. Okay. So, so you got to get it done. Okay, so he's going to bring the steaks over. <laughs> okay, Brian, we, we've got our steaks in, and Scott here, your very capable helper who looks like he's been doing most of the work, uh, explain the, the strapping technique and why we're going to put the poles down for this guy. All right, this particular strapping technique is called chain lock. Um, you, again, you don't want that bottom to move at all. It's okay that this top moves a little bit as far as the flexibility, but you typically when you're placing a stake want to do north and south because you get your north winds in the wintertime, you get your strong right. southerly winds in the summertime. So by putting them typically north-south, that helps out a lot. Um, but you just main thing and then you're going to guide back your way and then you get zero movement. Okay. What about the old, I've seen people that used to use, uh, I guess they call it garden tape? It's, it's the green looking stuff. Is this just a, a new way of doing it here where it doesn't put as much stress on the tree? Garden tapes is a much smaller application. You're okay. going to have a lot of wind on this over the next year. Okay. Garden tape stretch is too easy. Okay. I so got you. you got to be real careful with that. And you're saying we should probably leave, you should probably leave this tree stake for what, a year? At least a year, yes sir. Okay. Most of the time we'll, we'll come back within that next year and remove it. Reevaluate it, make Correct. sure it looks like it's We'll take it off, move the tree around, make sure it didn't get uh, that the roots have been established, and a lot of that determ is determined by how healthy the tree was the whole right. uh, summer and season that you've had it. And remember, always watch your trees too. Don't be one of those drive-by gardeners. You have this beautiful garden out there, and you only drive up and look at it every now and then from your vehicle. Right. You know, so you've got to get out there, guys, and look at your plant every now and then. If you see something weird going on with it, whether it be the the leaves looking funny or it's dropping leaves at the wrong time of year, there's all kind of little things to notice. So just okay. keep your eyes on your on your living plants. Right. Okay. Well, what's next? Is that it? We're done. That's it. The trees. It's home. It's home. It's home. We're done, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Feel free to come out here to Heirloom Gardens. If you have any questions, you can also go to their website. I believe you guys have, have a page that talks about planting trees, and it's at heirloomgardenexperts.com. We'll be back with more from KAMU Down Home right after this.